Hey everyone, um, this is the SMI community call uh, on happening on Wednesday, May 13th. Uh, we are going to kick off the meeting today with community stand up and introductions. If you're new to the community, feel free to, um, after stand up, introduce yourself. Um, and then uh, after that, we can just do some follow up from the week before and any open PRs. Um, and yeah. If you have anything, again, feel free to add it to the agenda. The link is in the chat. Okay. Um, Thomas, you want to kick us off? Sure. Uh, I have been answering a bunch of questions. Thank you, everybody who's been asking them. I think they're really great. Michelle and I had a good conversation this morning about kind of ways we can update the spec to explain the decisions that we've been making as time goes on. Uh, I think I had a couple open questions on Stefan's PR that either I missed a response or didn't get answered. So I'll bring that up. But other than that, um, I think that's it from my perspective. Thanks. Uh, Stefan, do you want to um, share anything you have for stand up today? <clears throat> I haven't made the PR. I have made a couple of issues to discuss first what to do. So yeah, we got stuck at defining the TCP route spec. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's discuss that uh, later on this meeting for sure. Okay, that's um, it for me. Okay. Uh, Daniel, you want to give us a stand up? Um, so we are, again, we're, we're also still working on figuring out the, the TCP and UDP route specs. Uh, we had a, a quick little chat with uh, with Thomas this week about um, some TCP route matchers, uh, in particular by adding things like SNI matching onto TCP routes, or and which in theory would open up some of the if you go along that mindset of having protocol specific matchers it follows the pattern of having like HTTP route has HTTP specific matchers, TCP routes would have TCP specific matchers, and then UDP would have, I mean, UDP doesn't really have anything, but in some, I've seen there's apparently TLS over UDP. So apparently, you know, we could, we could in theory do something of, of that nature. And then as if we add more, more protocols, more things to, to route with, we could add it. Um, again, there was some back and forth as far as to like whether, like how that would actually work for implementations. And I don't think that it would be, if you're using a sidecar implementation, you don't really need to use those kind of matters as much. But if you're using something that doesn't use a sidecar, those matchers become much more important to handle, again, basically access and that sort of thing. But I think, I think just from a- I, I think, think it's just even from a more- prime, Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, I think it's even more interesting when we start thinking about this in relation with the um, SIG app that's, no, SIG networking that's doing the Ingress V2 stuff, because that's yeah. really where like, the SNI matching makes all of the sense in the world. Yeah, and uh, it's just one of those. Once we, you know, what if it follows the mindset that we've already that the, the project has already laid out, uh, but it just sort of takes it that one step further and says, okay, we've been doing it, we just haven't acknowledged it. Now we can, we're actually just going to move forward with it. So that's sort of where we're at right now. Oh, thanks. Um, is there an issue number or an issue you could like us to where all that discussion is happening or is it in the chat? It is definitely in an issue. Okay, cool. All right. I, can I do don't it. remember which the issue is. Let me, let me go dig around for it. Thanks. Um, Michael, do you have anything for us today? Nope, not really for my side. Okay. And Edith, do you have anything? Yeah, it's really. Okay, cool. Uh, anybody else want to um, uh, give a stand up? Naveen, Josh, Saptak? 
uh, Nicolay. Okay, no problem. If you do want to introduce yourself, feel free to jump in. Um, I'll go ahead. I just Josh Burkus. I work on a lot of things Kubernetes. Um, honestly, what happened was my meetings reshuffled so I could actually attend this. So I thought I would drop in um, and check on what's going on with SMI. Awesome. Welcome. Cool. Um, uh, hi, everyone. I'm Navi. Uh, currently, I am working on SMI conformance tool, uh, which is a GSOC project. So yeah, I let this back and I dropped in here to know more. Cool. Um, hey, uh, how's the conformance stuff going? I remember there was like a spec we were trying to create, but I didn't, I didn't think, I don't know if there's any progress that's being made uh, there. Yeah, so I was going through the spec and uh, yeah, I was thinking of, of creating a maybe sample app and uh, then uh, whenever a service uh, mesh is deployed, this uh, mesh uh, sample app would also be deployed and then we can track down all the all the like uh, all the CRDs and uh, metrics and everything uh, accordingly. Uh, so it will be bundled in uh, with the service like in the adapters that we actually use. So yeah, so, uh, the spec uh, the we we will update the spec too. Okay, cool, awesome. Um, are you all doing that piece by piece, or are you just kind of tackling the whole thing? Because I'd love to see. If you have like even just traffic split conformance kind of done, I'd love to see how that works. Yeah. So first of all, uh, we will uh, go with uh, traffic metrics or uh, like uh, I, I'll just look down whatever can be done uh, like easily, and uh, then we will tackle a piece by piece. So okay. uh, I'm just uh, like uh, getting through what uh, getting to know how we can use Devon or Prometheus or some other metrics to just like uh, if uh, because traffic metrics, I guess. Uh, would be the easiest to tackle. Okay. Um, I'm in the weeds and metrics myself right now. So if you have any questions or something, I mean, I know the answer, but I can kind of help figure it out because I also have been digging around as Thomas knows. Sure. I'll reach out. Cool. Um, all right. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, just a quick introduction for me. So this is Nikolai. I am with Kong. I work on our service mesh called Kuma. And uh, we are looking into SMI spec as uh, every other service meshes do, so let's see. Cool. Hey, would you maybe in one of the upcoming meetings want to give a demo or something? Uh, yep, yep, I can do that, yeah. Cool. That's great, great to hear, awesome. Okay, um, moving forward, uh, I think, um, one of the things that I had kind of mentioned last week was uh, like, I just wanted to kind of close out on the versioning. So there is a pull request up. I still need to rebase and add some things, but it's an attempt at reorganizing the, uh, the repo to make it a little clearer what version is attached to what and what the specs version is. So up until now, there hasn't been like a summer um, attached to like the spec itself. Uh, but I moved everything, like I, I moved all of the um, like high level spec description uh, and terminologies. I added a terminology section and did a few other things into like a, a spec file. And then that thing gets versioned um, and we can do like tagged releases of that. Um, so right now I just versioned up it at like 0 0.4.0. I'm gonna change that version to 0 0.4.0 dash working draft. Um, and then we can, once we all agree on that, if we agree on that, then we can like tag it at 0 0.4.0 and do a release there. Um, so that's how I'm thinking about it. If you have, I've gotten positive feedback. I think the one thing that was outstanding was, um, uh, I think Thomas and Stefan suggested um, that we get rid of like the uh, API group and version, um, uh, API version header. Uh, on all of the examples so that we can just like iterate on the examples um, without having to update all the versions on the examples because like those have gotten left behind in the past and it's like a very tedious thing. Um, so you might be wondering, oh, where do I get that version information from? 
So at the uh, top of every um, API uh, uh, file, um, API description file, uh, there's a header that says like what um, API group and version these resources uh, belong to. So that's the general gist of it. Um, if anybody has any big objections or any little objections, like I'm happy to take comments right now or on the PR. Uh, I, I have zero objections. My only question is, how can I help to get it merged? Oh, cool. Um, I think uh, I just have to do a rebase. Um, so let me do that and finish up some stuff later today. Um, but after that, there will be some holes. So there's like a terminology section that's not like filled in and stuff like that. So if we could like iterate on that. That'd be really cool together. Um, sure. That'd be great. So yeah, let me just rebase and I'll ping y'all later today and uh, we can try to get it merged. Okay. Um, Sneha is a colleague of mine. She has some questions. We have some questions around SMI metrics that we posted. I talked to Thomas a little bit about um, this earlier today, uh, but there's an issue in the SMI spec repo for that. I'll link it um, in case anybody has a chance. Uh, I just moved that over to discussions, by the way. Yeah, what's we... discussions? What's discussions? It's like the coolest thing ever. Now when you ask a question, it's not an issue anymore. It's a discussion. Oh. That's it's it's going to blow your mind. How do I, it's oh, like, there's a tab for it. It's like discuss and uh, GitHub got together and sorted their stuff out. That's super cute. I like that a lot. Um, cool. All right, so there is a discussion, 165. Here. Um, so if you have any uh, uh, time today, that'd be great to, or whenever to answer those questions, that'd be great. Um, and I'm gonna try to take a stab at some of these myself. Okay. Um, all right. That's all I have for uh, discussion items. Does anybody else have something they want to discuss? Do we want to go back to the um, TCP matching or the, actually the TCP uh, spec uh, issue in general? Stefan, do you want to talk about that? Yeah. So right now we have the TCP route. Um, in SMI, but it's just, for me, it's just a placeholder. Um, I don't know how others see it. Um, there is no specification of this object. So there are, in my mind, there are two options. Either we define uh, TCPs, uh, TCP route as a way of matching ports, which I think it makes sense or we just delete it from the spec and we add the type in the um, in the traffic uh, rules that can be i don't know uh, grpc http http v2 uh, tcp udp uh, the the original idea behind the tcp route was just to make it so that you could write policy that matches, not actually to define the protocol. Um, now that I've said that, I think I love the idea of moving ports over to TCP route. I think we just need to figure out what happens to ports on um, the traffic access policy because it's there today. And we need to figure out what ports will mean for the HTTP route group as well. Yeah, so I think the uh, the port matching um, can be added to all routes, no matter the type. So let's say it's like an interface. Every route has to implement, can implement the matching based on ports because all protocols are are port related in a way, right? Is there any reason why we couldn't compose these? Like if TCP route matches plus an HTTP route group, like would that solve the same problem? Because then we won't have to duplicate the data everywhere. Could you do it by right? reference? Hmm? 
could you do could you do it by reference so instead of having instead of having a uh, right instead of having duplicate records you could just reference a port that was kind of what i was suggesting but on the access control resource so your access control if you want to match routes for http on a specific port you would reference both the TCP route with a specific port and an HTTP route group. If you wanted to just match everything coming in for a service on those HTTP routes, you would do that without the port. And if you only wanted to match on the port, then you would just do the TCP route and not the HTTP routes. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. But what happens with UDP? So you cannot have HTTP over UDP, right? Right. So with UDP, you would just have, I, I mean, we would technically need to have a UDP right. group. So, so maybe the point is not to have it be a TCP or UDP, but actually to call out what we're trying to define here, which is what L5, which OSI model are we going to pick on here? Hmm. Four? Thank there you. is only one OSI model, but um thinking a bit into the future as far as i remember http3 is based in UDP. it scrolls out the tcp part so should we come up with a more generic way to go about that not you know assuming that there is tcp and udp or, or maybe oh. the better question is what value do we have actually calling out tcp versus mm. udp instead of just mm. calling out that it's ports well mm. i'll I'll, I'll throw I'll throw a wrench into this discussion that came up in one of our client meetings. TCP UDP is great, except when you get thrown into a commercial setting that uses neither. So mm -hmm. we have a client that manages like VoIP stuff and they use some IP protocol Yes, <laughs> not TCP right. or IP. I mean, it does have a, it does have a source and a destination port, and it does have a source and a destination IP, but it's not TCP and it's not UDP. And the problem they have is, how do you route this? I, I mean, I like the idea of making it an IP matcher or at that level, right? Because then you could also do wildcards for IP addresses. You could say this should match all IP addresses or this should only match non-routable IP addresses or this should route, you know, like it, it feels like that's an interesting way to add it all in. And then it's generic. It's not a protocol we, specific. It's really what we, we're trying to do with it. Mm. Yeah, and that, but what I'm saying is if you look at it from that perspective, then you could say, okay, we have HTTP routes, TCP, UDP, and then if somebody wants to implement, you know, a base IP route, you know, they, they can go ahead and do so without interfering with anybody else. Well, the, is there, or, or so that's the question is, is there anything specific that we need to know about that, the protocol at that level? There's is a bajillion, a port like 1995 IP came up with a bajillion custom IP <laughs> protocols for, you know, industrial environments like. Yeah, know, no, no, totally. My point, though, was, is, is it generic, right? Do we only care about a, a source and desk port and a source and desk IP? Mm. If we do, then maybe well, it's again, better to go that route. What the, the issue with that is what specifically can be routed on for that specific protocol who knows or you know what i mean like, uh, right it's I the same thing point. about tcp we we for tcp we have a, a standardized sni header that we can use but for some custom thing uh, all right so the sni point convinced me we, we no. definitely want or it might be advantageous to have a generic IP, but we definitely still need the TCP. And so at least for today, we might as well just do the TCP with ports and layer it and call it done unless someone thinks that's a horrible idea. 
I guess the, the, the only question, uh, the only question with referencing, um, becomes an issue with, um, uh, namespacing and could be an issue with, uh, uh, access control as far as if we say, okay, we're going to put, right. Are we going, if we want to reduce the number of duplicated code by having a ref by referencing a port as opposed to just entering the value. If we want to have, you know, 10 namespaces, we're still going to have to create 10, you know, duplicate namespaced ports. And it doesn't really solve any problems per se. It just ends up being a more of a nightmare for debugging because oops. Yeah. I don't think uh, so because traffic target is cross namespace. Well, I would also like to make traffic target, not cross namespace. Tra I mean, traffic target can't, right. But that's the, the issue is traffic target is cross namespace, but not using referenced objects. You can, right. You can, you can manually, def you know, enter information, but it doesn't reference objects from another namespace. It does. It does actually today. That's the thing that I want to change because that's so a uh, big nasty security issue. A traffic target can be created in a namespace and can reference a service account in another namespace and a destination no, no, but does, account in another but does it But does it actually use the object reference or does it just have the name and namespace? It right. does not like use the object reference. That is it that's, or that's the key. It was supposed to be, but that that's the thing is if if you have R if you are R back restricted to one namespace you can create a a traffic target that references something in a namespace you don't have access to. And it whereas should if, be. like network if, policies work like that. Whereas if we were using actual object references you would not be able to reference an object that you don't have visibility to. Am I, am I, am I correct on that? Am I correct on that assumption? So <clears throat> let's assume I own a namespace, right? Yeah. And I want to block access to my app in my namespace from a different namespace. So I have to reference something from another namespace. I can say only By the default, service. It's all blocked. Uh, the the, the problem is, the problem is actually the who who creates the traffic target specifically it, at the moment the traffic target let me make sure i'm not talking out my butt here there's one specific field on traffic target that uh i find frustrating which is the destination allows you to put in any namespace that's the piece that needs to change. So traffic target needs to live next to the resource that it is protecting, but it should be able to reference sources and specs from any namespace. But I will take you that one and go one further. By default, I have, I am in my test namespace. By default, nobody has access to my app. I have it that if I can only see my namespace, I have two choices. I can either let everybody or I can let nobody. Mm, I guess I'm not because I'm not aware of any other namespaces and nor should I be. However, if I now am granted access to namespace two, now I can actually reference objects in there and say, okay, I will allow from, you know, from these right from X and Y in that namespace that I can see and can actually reference directly as opposed to nothing. This is, uh, this is an unfortunate outcome of us smashing identity together with Kubernetes objects, yeah. because theoretically, if you are in the test namespace and I'm in the bar namespace, I should be able to say, I'm coming from the bar namespace. Here's my identity. And you go, great, I'll put it in. Awesome. Let's do this thing. 
but with the, the objects, I get your point, like discovering it and the rest of that, like, I don't want you to see the service accounts in the bar namespace. You don't like, I just want you to know that that's the identity that you should be checking. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm restricted to my namespace, I don't even know you exist at all. Okay, but that's not practical, what you're saying. Like, in normal use cases, you have, you are allowed to a single namespace and you want to allow, for example, the ingress controller to access your app because you need to expose it. Well, this is how get, Kubernetes work. But this works. is, but this is what, but this is what, but this is what, what Thomas was saying is, if, if we are assuming that administrators that have cluster wide access and know and have full visibility, if they're the ones that are creating objects, great. But if all of a sudden we're not dealing with cluster admins and we're dealing with people that are, you know, restricted to a namespace, if I, I mean, using SMI becomes much more difficult. The, this is actually more a question, I think, around the RBAC for the implementation. Because theoretically, someone correct me if I'm not totally wrong here, even with an object reference, it's really just YAML that's going into the database. We could put anything in there, anything in there that we wanted. The big problem is, is that the implementation needs to go validate that that exists, which means that the service mesh implementation needs to have cluster-wide access. Like the user doesn't actually need the cluster-wide access, but the service mesh implementation does. That makes sense. But I understand what Daniel is saying is that it's muddying the waters when you say, okay, I'm going to reference something out of the namespace. I do want to say, okay, we're at time. Um, if y'all want to continue this conversation, we can stay on for another 10 minutes and continue. Otherwise, we can continue offline. Uh, Daniel, would you mind creating an issue around this as well so that we can sure. chat about it and write our thoughts down? Yeah, I need to think about it a bit more, but I think, but I think it is a discussion that we should have. It, at the bare minimum, getting namespace removed from the traffic target destination is the right thing to do. The yeah. question then becomes what we want to do with the other object references. Also the port, like it makes no sense to specify a single port. Like, uh, yeah. Stefan, that right. was that was my point. I think let's let's just make the change where we put move port off traffic targeted onto TCP route. Like I think that makes a ton of sense. Okay. So then, anytime you want to reference a port, you have to use the traffic. Oh, excuse me. You have to would have to use the TCP route object, right? Yeah, that can have many ports, not just one. Okay. That's right. The normal choice of like. We okay. can have many ports. <laughs> okay. um, hey, so uh, one more thing, um, Thomas, uh, you had like a gist where um, we talked about a bunch of like, uh, not referencing just service account as like the source uh, identity. Um, it was a way to decouple um, us from using just like Kubernetes things. Uh, do you still have that information? Uh, there was a, I moved an issue over to a discussion. Okay, cool. I'll look through that. But it was just the idea was, hey, let's have uh, multiple um, like ways to reference uh, identity, not just service account. I love. To oh, right. Let me see. Let me look around. Okay, cool. I, I'm remembering what you're talking about now. I, I would love to kick off that conversation too. We're going to be starting implementation on the traffic target stuff here sooner rather than later. And I think we need to do a spec rev before we get there. Sounds good. All right. Thank you everyone for a very productive discussion. I'll see y'all later. Bye. Bye. Thank you all. Bye.